Hello friends, this video on chemical reactions and equations part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 10. Now we'll discuss the other types of chemical reactions which we have talked and please remember that these type of chemical reactions will be part of those five major types, right? So there are the five major types, but these will also be, these are just the reaction based on the property. So other reactions which we have was based on the number of inputs and outputs. For example, in one case, uh, the decomposition happens, right? So one item got into two items. In synthesis, we have two items, you get, you make, you make it AB, right? So this was the decomposition, this was synthesis. And then you have this, uh, this displacement reaction, you have AB, you add it, see this becomes AC and B. Then you had this uh, double displacement reaction. You have AB and CD. This becomes AC and BD, right? So those, and then you have combustion reactions. So these were the reactions which in the the major classification. These precipitation reactions are nothing but a reaction where you have two solutions you mix. You get a precipitation of insoluble C also and a solution. So generally, generally in, in maximum case, this precipitation reaction is nothing but a double displacement reaction. It's a type of double displacement reaction. In 99% case, this precipitation reaction is nothing but an example of double displacement reaction. So where so you have two solutions, you mix, you get one insoluble substance, that is nothing but a precipitation of that in one solution. Correct. So that's what the chemistry description says. In this uh, precipitation reaction, two solutions are mixed together. It forms an insoluble solid, and that is nothing but the precipitate. It's a type of double displacement reaction. Itself. So when I'm discussing about precipitations, let's discuss solubility also because they are all linked together. So things can be soluble, it can be moderately soluble, and it can be insoluble, right? So for example, so if you mix milk and water, they are soluble, right? You can't separate them. Moderately soluble that you have some sodium chloride and you mix with water. They are soluble, but after some time, if you, I mean, you still find some crystals of that. If you, sugar, if you add with water, right? You still find some crystals of sugar. Or if you have this chocolate coffee, you add with, uh, uh, you make chocolate shake, right? So chocolate shake you make chocolate and you add with uh, milk you when you prepare the chocolate shake things looks fine but after some time right this precipitate down so they're moderately soluble insoluble is it won't even mix for example you take iron nails and you try to mix with water it won't even mix you do anything it won't even mix those things are insoluble so so, and these things are nothing but the property of the substance, right? So, the solubility is nothing but the physical property of the substance and that depends on a lot of factors, how it is structured and those kind of stuff so we'll study later process. These scientists have observed a lot of things and they have come to some generalization rules about the solubility of certain substance. The thing they observed was solubility also depends on the temperature. In most of the cases, in most of the cases, solubility increases with temperature. If you see, if you add sugar to water, you see that sometimes it is not, you don't, you're not able to mix it. But if you warm it, if you warm it, you see that you're able to mix it properly, right? This is the real scenario. You, in your kitchen also, you can do this. So you mix some sugar with water, you'll see that it, it, you need to churn it properly, right? You, you need to put some effort to mix it. But if you, the moment you warm it, everything is mixed. So in warm water, things get soluble easily. Same thing, you, you have this Horlicks in the comp line you have, you mix in cold water, it's not that easy to mix. But the, the water is warm, it's easy to mix. So the solubility depends on temperature in general case. It increases with the temperature. For example, so when you talk about solubility, you, you don't talk only about the substance, because it depends on the substance, but you also talk about the temperature. So you say, Potassium nitrate has a solubility of 31.2 gram per 100 gram of water at 20 degrees Celsius. That means if the water is 20 degrees Celsius, you can mix completely this 31.2 gram of potassium nitrate in 100 gram of water. 
Thus, you can say that solubility depends on two factors. One is the is the property of the substance, and then it is depending on temperature as well. So, a solution that contains maximum amount of dissolved solid is called saturated. For example, if I take hundred gram of water and I dissolve this much gram of potassium nitrate, I call this guy as a saturated. Thing. But now, what happens is if this is saturated now. And I cool it. I make it, let's suppose, five degrees Celsius. Now, at five degrees Celsius, this guy can hold, let's suppose, twenty-five grams only, right? Now, what happens is the extra six point two grams, it will come out. It will come out, and that will be a solid. And this process, nothing called recrystallization or precipitation, also you can see, right? So that is nothing but we are looking for, right? So we have an a solution which has some crystals and they are saturated now you decrease the temperature of this so whatever since you know decrease the temperature this this water can't hold those many crystals those things will come out and that is nothing but recrystallization so, so all things are linked actually precipitation recrystallization solubility so i thought it's better to have a slide on this and you guys should understand what is happening uh, the 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 real reason behind everything is that uh, a substance can hold a certain amount of salt at a certain temperature. The more you reduce the temperature, this things comes out, right? So the extra gram of salt, which which it it can't hold, it can't bear, it is crystallized and comes out. And that is nothing but the process of crystallization. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.